I happen to be the chief author of the GMO um, disclosure bill, and that, that's Yay. the House of Representatives right now. Um, I think if we can defeat two lousy constitutional amendments, we can probably pass this bill sometime too. Right? <laughs> So why is uh, the GMO labeling bill a good idea? Well, the GMO labeling bill just addresses the most basic right to know of consumers about what's in their food. Genetically engineered, genetically modified foods um, have an impact on our public health. And consumers have the right to know so they can make a decision. Do I want to buy this or do I not want to buy this food that's genetically modified? Um, again, this particular legislation that I'm proposing is a moderate position. It's not trying to ban genetically modified organisms in our food is trying to just say that the consumer has a right to know it should be labeled on their food so they can make a clear choice. We passed several laws like that in Minnesota. Um, a couple years ago I was the author of a bill that said um, parents have the right to know what's, that um, certain kinds of toxic compounds are in their baby bottles. You know, and that was the a BPA. huge fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was to allow parents to know that BPA is, is in um, baby bottles. It's a, something that's used in plastic. It was a huge fight. It took us two years. We had to weigh scientific study against scientific study, and legislators looked at those documents. And one of the very interesting things we found out, and that helped make the decision to pass that law, that phased out BPA at that time, was that um, they looked at the source of the studies. Who did the studies? You know, were they done by the chemical producing companies, or were they done by independent organizations, universities, others who um, had a more objective viewpoint? And um, I believe that legislators can make a good decision about this genetically engineered food labeling bill as well, looking at um, the pros and the cons, and again, who's funding the pressure one way or the other, either to stop the labeling or to allow it to go forward. A lot of people have asked me, why a state law? Why should Minnesota pass a law to label GMOs just in our state, and shouldn't it be a national effort? And my answer to them is it absolutely should be a national effort. Ultimately, it still is a national effort. But what has happened is that there have been labeling drives on the national level, and they have not been successful yet. The FDA received more than a million comments, more than they ever have before, uh, asking them to require labels on GMO foods, and they did nothing. So I think when that happened, a lot of us on the state level started realizing it's not going to happen on the national level. The industry is just too powerful on the national level to actually get any positive change to happen. Right to Know Minnesota is a group of people, uh, farmers, consumers, organizations. Uh, we're really hoping to build a broad coalition of people who care about food and who want uh, genetically modified foods labeled. Well, there's several reasons that uh, we should know whether foods we're looking at or considering buying are genetically modified. Um, one is that there's a number of environmental concerns with genetic modification. Um, they are um, causing resistance in weeds and pests and forcing farmers to use stronger and harsher toxic chemicals to grow the food. Um, secondly, there's significant health concerns. There have been animal studies that have connected genetically modified foods with cancers, immune system disorders, developmental delays, and other health problems. Um, so both from a health perspective and also from an environmental perspective, there are just a lot of concerns and unanswered questions about genetically modified foods. Yeah, do I think that GMOs are necessary to feed the world? Um, well, no. I mean, the best way to feed the world is to feed yourself, is to grow a garden, is to f raise food for your own family and for others. That's by far the most productive use of land. And in developing countries, by switching to soil building practices, composting, green manures, you can increase food production 180%, the studies show, without the use of GMOs at all. And the problem with GMOs in developing countries is these are patented, so people have to go back and buy high price seeds year after year, so they're shipping a lot of their money out of their own countries, whereas if they're saving their seeds and building their soil, they're more resilient to climate change, to droughts, to natural disasters, plus they have the resources, they're reinvesting in their own economies and feeding healthier products to their people. So um, I think it's, you know, the investment in GMOs is a good way to, f 
to enrich the stockholders of the companies that own the technology, um, but it's certainly not necessary to feed the people of the world. World hunger is not uh, uh, so much related to yield and productivity as it is to economics and um, just political uh, inequality and waste. A lot of food is wasted. Um, so we, have to, we can't separate hunger from economics and politics. Those have much more impact than just agricultural yield. And if you look at the reality, right now, over a third of the U.S. corn crop is actually going to ethanol to feed our cars. So we're not feeding that corn, the biotech corn, to people. It's being fed to our cars and to livestock, not to human beings. So most of the GMO crops are not even food. They're industrial crops. Um, they're not being used to feed people. It's a lot better to help people grow gardens and feed themselves rather than import uh, patented technologies um, that take money out of their economies. I had a big awakening around genetically modified foods when I um, had bought a lot of this Kashi Gold Lean cereal um, and was feeding it to my kids just about every day. I got it when it was on sale. And then I saw a, a research piece done by the Cornucopia Institute that found out that a number of cereals that claim to be natural actually are loaded with GMOs. This one, for example, says it has as much protein as an egg. It has about 90% GMO soy. I was really shocked by this because I think of them as a natural brand. I realize now that I just sort of bought into the same marketing that everybody else does. So I complained to Kashi, as many other people have done since then. I actually talked to the Wedge about no longer carrying the cereal as well. And I have since stopped buying this cereal. Another cereal I used to buy that I no longer buy is uh, Mom's Best Naturals. I actually called them and asked them if they contain, if their cereals contain GMOs. And they could not say that they didn't which means they probably do. There's a lot of corn and soy in cereals, so they're really a particular concern. I think if most moms knew that they were feeding their children genetically modified corn and soy every day, they would make some different decisions about their breakfast cereal. We just need to make GMO-free food widespread and not uh, something that only a few people can afford. So I think labeling GMOs would just create uh, more widespread use of, of GMO-free foods and make them more available to everybody. I think to the extent that some parents are not yet thinking about the issue of genetically modified foods, part of the reason for that is because they really don't have any other options in the grocery store. So I think uh, labeling genetically modified foods would actually give them options and give them choices, and I think that's what they would ideally like. Certainly if they knew anything about some of the animal studies that have connected GMO foods to health concerns, they would stop and think twice before they bought those foods and fed them to their children. So I think if they had access to other foods, they would choose other foods, and that would also turn our whole agricultural system in a direction that is more de democratic and more sustainable for all of us. Well, what would happen to farmers if GMOs were labeled? Well, we have to keep in mind that this whole development of GMOs is really very recent. It's only been about 15 years that these products have been on the market. And so, you know, farmers were growing non-GMO crops for many, many years, and they could certainly shift back to uh, non-GMO crops if that's where the market was at. Um, the problem is right now a lot of the, the, the smaller seed companies have all been bought up. Their genetics are all being controlled by the companies that own the GMOs and sell and they promote the GMOs because they're patented and they can charge much higher price. And there's a lot of backlash amongst farmers for the exorbitant prices that the companies, the biotech companies are charging for their seeds. So it could get back to less expensive seeds and I think farmers would welcome that. They would have more control. They'd be able to save their own seeds again for certain crops, um, which they're not allowed to do now. So it would open up a lot of opportunities and certainly, um, for organic farmers who don't use GMOs to begin with, um, you know, I think they would suffer less 
potential for harm from drift and contamination issues um, and they would have access to more um, varieties of seeds as more non-GMO seeds are on the conventional market. That means that those genetics are available in the public domain. So I think there's, you know, it, it's a mixed bag. Farmers would have to make some changes to their operation, but agriculture is changing all the time. It's changed dramatically in the last 15 years, and it will change dramatically in the next 15 years. And there's over 60 countries that require the labeling of foods uh, from GMOs right now. So it would bring the U.S. kind of into the 21st century and, uh, you know, in line with our trading partners. And, you know, we've lost some world markets um, share because we're just trying to force GMOs onto the world market. And a lot of the markets are saying, no, thanks. We don't want products grown in the U.S. So it could really be a boon to agriculture to go back to non-GMO crops. One question people ask is whether meat should be labeled uh, as containing GMOs if the animals had actually eaten GMO feed. Uh, that is not part of the Minnesota law, the Minnesota legislation that we're trying to work for. Um, however, uh, the biotech industry is working on creating a genetically engineered salmon. So the salmon itself in that case would be genetically engineered. Under the Minnesota law, that would require a uh, GMO label. The average person cannot only make a difference in a movement like this that has to do with the consumer's right to know whether or not there's GMO modified foods. Um, they're the ones that will make the difference. Without a strong consumer based uh, movement to really help educate legislators and other policymakers about what genetically engineered foods are about and why labeling, just again giving the basic right to know, a moderate position of, of the right to know. Um, Without that coming from the grassroots, it probably won't change. You know, I can tell you that in the Minnesota legislature, it's really important sometimes when you get like three or four people making a phone call about a particular issue. Because I always tell my constituents and others, if you're calling me and you're one of about four or five people calling me, that means there are four or five hundred people who probably share your, your viewpoint. Because it's true that most of our um, citizens, most of the people who we represent, don't ever really bother to call us or use the system. So I always know that if I get, you know, five calls, my goodness, there must be a lot more people out there who really are concerned about this and I pay attention to that issue. And I'm talking about individual calls, people personally putting their name on either on a piece of paper or calling or somehow indicating that they have a specific uh, concern and they have a story to tell. Well, I, I encourage uh, everyone to get involved in this uh, movement. It is a campaign. It is a movement. There's just a, a time sometimes when you know that it's, the timing is there and people more and more in our country and in our state uh, want to know. They just want to know what's going on. And the right to know is so basic. I believe the momentum is gathering. And um, it's not a partisan issue. People on both sides of the aisle and on, on many sides of the aisles <laughs> uh, I think can agree that consumers' right to know something so basic as what's in their food, whether or not there's genetically modified materials, genetically engineered foods um, that are being sold to them, is just, uh, again, a real basic right, a consumer's right. And so I think it's a great time to get involved. We're going to win this one. I think labeling GMOs across the board would result in a more widespread availability of GMO free foods for everybody. And that's, I think, really our ultimate goal. Because I don't want just my family to be healthy, I want all children to have access, and all people to have access to healthy foods.